Tonight, HBO's upcoming streaming service has new plans. Uber gets new opposition. And are we one step closer to banishing passwords altogether? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 231 for Tuesday, December 9th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface, integrations with Getty Images and Google Apps, new templates, and an incredible feature called Cover Pages. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. HBO made a big strategic shift today, at least an announcement anyway. The company announced that it will license the technology behind the standalone streaming service that it plans to offer in 2015 and has killed a project, an internal one called Maui, that would have built the new streaming service in-house. Sources tell Fortune that the technology will instead come from MLB Advanced, which provides streaming technology for clients like WWE Network, among others although HBO would probably be its biggest client if it indeed, ha indeed happens. It isn't clear how this will affect HBO Go either. That's the company's existing streaming service for cable subscribers. Earlier this year, HBO Go suffered outages during highly viewed episodes of both Game of Thrones and True Detective. I remember those dark days. And according to sources, CTO Otto Burks had known about a memory leak for about nine months, but had not acted on it, which eventually led to the HBO Go outages. Amazon Instant Video now supports Ultra HD picture quality, which means that Amazon Prime customers can now watch movies and TV shows and Amazon original series content in a 4K resolution. Now, movies in Ultra HD are also on sale starting at $19.99 for non-Amazon Prime members. So there is, there is some stuff for people who don't want to pay the $99 per year Prime member fee. Viewers will still need a compatible Ultra HD smart TV, though, to see the difference. Amazon is currently supporting models from LG, Samsung, and Sony, and says that it will add more next year. The company is also ramping up its original content roster from Amazon Studios, and all seven of the pilots that are debuting next year will be in 4K as well. So it's a slow rollout, but it's definitely rolling out. In other Amazon news, the company has announced a new make an offer feature that lets consumers negotiate prices with merchants. It works a lot like what the best offer feature works like on eBay and will let shoppers in certain categories like sports and entertainment collectibles or fine art to make bids that the seller could either accept or decline or make a counter offer. Make an offer is entirely opt in for merchants. So communications are private between the two parties and then a price point has been decided on and then everybody's happy. The offer option is restricted to 150,000 items that are currently on Amazon, at least for now. But Amazon says that it will expand this offer to cover hundreds of thousands of items from sellers in 2015, but didn't give any details on which categories those would be. Police in Sweden carried out a raid in Stockholm today, which included seizing servers, computers, and other equipment. Now, at right around the same time, the Pirate Bay and several other torrent-related sites went offline. Torrent Freak claims sources that say this was indeed action against the Pirate Bay. Paul Pinter, who's the police national coordinator for IP enforcement, said in a statement, quote, there has been a crackdown on a server room in Greater Stockholm. This is in connection with violations of copyright law. Torrent Freak reports that police may have detained at least one man connected to the operation. Other torrent sites to disappear include EZTV, Zoink, Torage, and Superbay.org. Okay, let's take a poll. Who here hates managing all of their passwords? Me. Yeah, it's kind of an unpopular thing to do these days, but we need passwords, right? That's the way that the internet works. Well, joining us to talk a little bit more about how it might work differently is John Fingas, who's the associate editor at Engadget. Hi, John. Hi, nice to speak to you again. Nice to speak with you as well. Okay, so you wrote an article that the tech industry is completing its standards for banishing passwords. What does this mean? Well, basically, what it means is that the uh, that the uh, that part of me that uh, they've now got a uh, firm, open standard for using alternative means to sign into, like, say, websites and apps uh, without having to use a password. So, for example, things like, um, say, uh, USB dongles or 
or uh, fingerprint readers, biometric readers, like you know, like retina scanners. Basically, any anything that like will m make it easier and potentially more secure to, to um, sign into um, things you use. Now, I know that this is a collection of folks uh, involved in the Fido Alliance, the Fido Alliance project. Is this based in a particular country? Does it have pretty good representation from members all over the world? Uh, yeah, it's like, well, it's definitely international. Like it's like North America, uh, Europe, like uh, Asia, you name it. Um, the, the A lot of the companies behind it are actually fairly major. Like you'll find like there's Google, Samsung, Lenovo, Microsoft, uh, and there's a bunch of like, you know, payment companies like uh, I believe Visa and MasterCard. And you also see even the Alibaba, the, uh, the uh, like the giant e-commerce site. Mm -hmm. So like, they're represented well that way, but there are some uh, gaping holes in it. Like, for example, like Apple's not there. I mean, there are companies that can make things like, say, Touch ID work for, for uh, you know, sign-ins and so on. But, like, yeah, you're probably not going to get, uh, like, FIDO support out of the box. So uh, there are some problems with it right now. Yeah, when you were listing the the companies that, that, that were officially involved and you didn't mention Apple, that was the first thing I thought of. Okay, well, Apple has a proprietary solution, uh, at least for some ways that you would uh, traditionally use a password with Touch ID. When when you've got a company that ha has has found quite a bit of success with its own solution, do, would we ever expect Apple to join this alliance? Would it make any sense? I mean, I, I guess at some point you you get protocols that get passed through something like Bluetooth or NFC, for example. I mean, that's how those things start as well, but. Password specifically, do the companies want to play nicely with each other? Uh, I certainly, I certainly wouldn't rule out, like say, a company like Apple joining. And I mean, I, and I think a lot of companies will want to use it because I mean, technically, you can use like FIDO standards and so on, like even if you're not uh, like a member of the alliance. So, you know, like it's it's possible, but. Apple in particular is a bit of a, a tricky company because they're they're notorious for being like either we control the standard, we control the format, or or nobody does. So they might not be too much of a fan of a stand of a standard where where they don't get to say how it works, basically. So Okay, so let's say, let's just, you know, put aside who may not want to participate for a second. Okay, we're we're in a passwordless world. What are how are we unlocking everything? Do we have little dongles that we're that we're plugging into laptops? As as anybody who's watching our video stream saw on on one of the um, uh, on one of the illustrations, is it fingerprint based? Is it a combination of that and other things? I think well, at least personally, what I suspect we'll probably do most often is things like like uh, fingerprint authentication because it's like it's one of those things. Well, your hand's already on your phone, so why not just like, use your thumb? I mean. Like Apple, of course, is doing that, but I mean, it's like Samsung's readers have that. Like, uh, you can get some, uh, I believe you can get some HTC phones that do that. Uh, but ba basically, like, it's something that's relatively easy to do without without uh, having too stringent requirements. I mean, I, I could see retina scanners and so on, like, be, uh, being fairly common, mm -hmm. um, be just because, like, on a computer, because, like, well, a lot of people have webcams on their laptops, so it makes sense that they would, uh, you know, you just, like, stare at your computer for a second, and then it signs you in. Um, USB dongles, I don't think so much, just because those... Uh, those <laughs> it sounds uh, those, pretty uh, insecure. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> every, every, yeah, anybody, yeah, anybody's used the, that, that uh, kind of, like, um, you know, copy-protected software where you have to put a dongle in just to use it. That is, a, that is a royal pain, so I can see it happening for some people, but not many. How close would we be to seeing the next generation of, 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 of a bunch of devices uh, that don't use passwords? Typically, when an alliance forms of this kind, sometimes we're looking at a few years, sometimes things happen pretty quickly. What are your thoughts on a password-free world of the future? Well, the good news is that I mean there are actually a few devices, well, may, maybe more than a few devices that are actually already technically FIDO capable. So in a sense, they've got the ball rolling there. Um, uh, I think most of what you you may see it uh, kick into the mainstream uh, like starting next year. I mean, like CES is in January, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you start to see people like you know announcing things like right there that uh, that take advantage of of. of uh, like you know, biometric authentication and other, and other methods to sign you in a little more easily. So, I think it could, uh, could roll out relatively quickly, at least so long as like people like the products that the, that this authentication is attached to. 
John Vikas is the associate editor at Engadgets. Thanks so much for joining us again, John. And before I let you go do a little holiday shopping, remind people where they can keep up with your work. All right. Well, you can always check out where, what I'm doing at Engadget.com. And uh, I'm on Twitter at John Fingus, so I'm pretty easy to find. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us, John. You're very welcome. Take care. Coming up in the show, Uber gets banned in parts of Europe, a few parts now, and a synchronized holiday light show that's guaranteed to make us all feel really, really lazy. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Squarespace just launched the latest version of their platform. Have you checked out Squarespace 7? It is lovely, completely redesigned interface, and it makes it a lot easier if that was even possible, to create your own professional website or online portfolio. As a Squarespace member, I've seen the service just get better and better, and Squarespace 7 is just easier to get started. Now, of course, you can, you can bring over content from a blog that might already exist somewhere else, but it's also easy to just get up and running very quickly. You don't have to do things like toggling between different views, like a site manager and a preview mode. That's all happening in one place now, so it's been simplified. You can preview designs in various different device modes. You know, some phones are smaller than other phones, and there's a variety of tablet sizes and laptops. You want to know how your site's going to look on all of those different screens. You now have access to Getty Images. That's professional stock photography from within Squarespace itself. You don't have to open up another tab and, and complete a purchase and then figure out how, where to sit. No, that's all happening behind the scenes. And Squarespace has also designed category-specific templates those cater to a variety of industries. You might want to put together a really beautiful website uh, for your fine art or maybe uh, photos of, I don't know, maybe you're better at sewing. Maybe you just sewed some beautiful sweaters for the holidays. I don't know. You, 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 could, you could sell whatever you want. In fact, e-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels and you can accept donations as well. That's all built in. Starts at just $8 per month for a Squarespace plan and it includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Mobile Ready is really important to Squarespace too. They've got a bunch of blogs, the portfolio, the note, the metric, and the blog. Mobile apps are all on the go ways to not only access your website and manage comments and, and, and add images and change layouts, you can do that from anywhere. Hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of all the hosting and you don't have to think about it. You can start a free two-week trial with no credit card required, two-week, completely free, build that website and get going on something that looks and acts really, really professional. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T, and you'll get 10% off. And if you want to use Squarespace 7, your existing customer, you just go to the settings tab and look at all the new features you've got. Thanks to Squarespace for the support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. All right, on to a few more stories that we're following today. Oh, there are a few more. YouTube's got a new app on Apple's Apple TV, which brings it a lot closer to the YouTube version that people might be familiar with on Xbox and other devices. Here's the bad news. YouTube videos on Apple TV will now run with ads. Here's the good news. All the videos that run on YouTube, and that includes music videos, will now also run on YouTube's Apple TV app. Used to be a lot more restricted than that. Apple also added news apps from Condé Nast, Fusion, Dailymotion, and UFC TV. Uber. Hmm. Uber News. Do I dare? Yes. Today, Uber got banned in two countries, Thailand and Spain. They joined the Netherlands. Since the company's drivers don't have taxi permits and often don't have insurance, either local cab drivers tend to get upset about having to pay for these things. A lot of municipal problems. Authorities in Delhi, India, have told Uber to stop operating in the city after an Uber driver allegedly raped a passenger. A police complaint in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and a lawsuit in Portland, Oregon, have authorities in both cities telling Uber to stop operations locally. And meanwhile, Uber is now facing a civil suit from San Francisco and Los Angeles district attorneys for, quote, making false or misleading statements to consumers and for engaging in a variety of business practices which violate California law. Finally, let's not ever say the suburbs did nothing for us. The neighbors of an unnamed community, I don't know where it is, synchronized the lights on their houses together to create what can only be really called a very enthusiastic and possibly seizure-inducing music video of sorts that was posted on YouTube with the title Wizards of Winter. And I don't know how you'd really enjoy it without a drone to record the whole thing, but they did that too. So A for effort. 
And sorry about your electric bill. How do you divvy that up? Can't answer that, but that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. If you know where that Christmas light show is, you can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Let me know because I want to go and check it out in person. And of course, you can watch this show live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you here tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.